The beauty and mystique of the Bahamas has long been a lure for conservationists worldwide. It took the work of two groups on two very different paths to refocus their efforts and ultimately propel what is the Bahamas National Trust into existence. Those two forces are the National Audubon Society and the members of the first expedition to Exuma in 1958. Dr. Carlton Ray was the leader of the 1958 expedition. I met Elia and we decided why not have a land and sea park because Elia had already received from the Earl of Ranfurly, the Governor General of the time, permission to set aside uh, some islands in the Exuma Keys, crown lands, but not the water. And so we mounted an expedition and it was at that point when we started to mount the expedition to fulfill the requirement that there be justification for this park idea in the Exumas, that I met uh, Herbert McKinney and Oris Russell, who were appointed by the government to be on our team. During the initial expedition to Exuma, the adventurers blazed trails through the brush, allowing access to historical points of interest. This enabled the scientists to study the island's plants and animals, some of which had become endangered. The scientists cataloged the living resources of the shallow seas around the Exumas. Their surveys included coral, fish, turtles, crustaceans, and mollusks. They returned to Nassau eager to share their findings. Godfrey Higgs came up with the idea of a national trust which said that the government shall hold lands and waters in trust for the public service. These people were very far-sighted in seeing that they needed to identify places that needed to be protected. Um, places of natural beauty, places that had importance for biodiversity, and put these, these places basically in a trust um, for the people of the Bahamas. Established by an act of parliament, it is able to carry out work that other NGOs are not able to do. It is able to continue to protect areas for the, for the nation, for the people of the Bahamas, and for the enjoyment of everybody who comes here. The Exuma Land and Sea Park was the first land and sea park in the world, and that's gone from strength to strength. This is a, a, actually a no-take zone, where you can go in and enjoy nature, but you can't take resources uh, from that park. And we know that over the years that uh, fish, conch, and lobster uh, population has increased tremendously and is now repopulating areas outside of the park. Meanwhile, the National Audubon Society focused on another area of our archipelago that needed desperate attention from conservationists, Inagua. The West Indian flamingo population was at a critical level. Its population had dwindled to under 5,000, by some definitions, almost extinct. The flamingos was almost, almost extinction, almost. But after we take over year after year, we just, we just bring them back. The Society's initial efforts led to the creation of the Inagua National Park in 1963. The Bahamas National Trust's strict enforcement of a no-fly zone and a ban on hunting in this park brought forth what is considered to be the greatest success story in Bahamian conservation history, the resurgence of the flamingo. From a population of five or 6,000 back in the early 50s, 
We now have populations of upward to 60,000. This is a tremendous story and a very successful story of um, uh, Bahamas National Trust and how a species was saved you know, because of uh, our conservation and our protection. You should see them, but they're nothing. Boy, I tell you, you, you think it's a million. <laughs>